Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. Sorry I'm a few minutes late in getting started today, but I had a lot of plants to gather for this discussion. And it's always really exciting to pull together plants for fall and winter container combinations because uh, almost the sky's the limit. You know, it's um, probably a good idea to stick mostly to plant material that keeps its leaves in the winter time but that doesn't exclusively uh, limit you to evergreen plants. Often uh, plants like red twig dogwood or uh, the sengukaku coral bark maple have beautiful bark in the winter in addition um, that can give you lots of great structure in a container planting. So here we are today uh, talking about, as I mentioned, fall and container winter, fall and winter container combinations. It is um, just as normal when you watch a video with us today uh, or any week, we've got a handout that accompanies the topic of discussion and you'll find the link to that handout directly below the title of this video or you know it says welcome to fall and winter container classes link below. Uh, click that link and you'll have the handout. If you can't get the handout, um, please make a comment and we will be sure to post it directly to you in the comment section. Um, as well, if you have questions or comments during the presentation, um, you can ask it as we are going along. And if it's, you know, what's that plant called again? Um, I can hopefully answer it on the spot. If not, I'll be able to answer questions after class. There is, uh, there are, I guess, a few things to consider when it comes to planting your containers for fall and winter. And um, some are specific to this time of year and others are just like you would planting your containers any time of year. Taking into consideration how much light, how much sunlight your container is going to get, um, whether it is you know, tucked up against the porch, maybe the sun now is setting at an angle that doesn't quite reach your porch very brightly, so that would be considered more shade. Um, whether or not your containers are in the rain. Are they out in the open where they're gonna get rained on or will they be dependent on you to give them water on a regular basis through the winter months? The size of your container, another one of those, um, well, this is something we have to discuss at every um, class on container combinations. How big should my pot be to really make an impact or to make a combination instead of just planting one plant, for example. So a great example, these are all real heavy ceramic containers. So um, as I grunt and groan and maybe complain as, I, as they get bigger, because this is the smallest, um, bear with me. Uh, this is for your education. So container size can be a, uh, well, container size is a limiting factor in how many plants can go into the container. It is um, hopefully obvious that the larger the pot, the bigger the plant can be in it, or the more plants you can put into it. So here I have, I believe, a nine inch uh, container. Oh no, 10 inches wide, nine inches tall. So at 10 inches wide, one six inch or one gallon size container almost fills up the the pot itself so i mean at 10 inches and we have six inches that is more than half of the pot with a one gallon plant and that gives us the right kind of height for proportion so if we've got a container of this size of 10 inches rather than using larger plant material like six inch or gallons we're going to try to limit ourselves to smaller pots um, so that you can put more into the container. So this is a true four inch, um, a little bit more generous in size than some four inch containers that you see, but a four inch size or average, even quart, is gonna be a better size in this pot, giving us at least room to do two more plants, <clears throat> three more if we really cram them in there. Still, we have a a grass that's giving us good height for the kind of proportion to this container. And we could either put this tall grass 
in the back, kind of center back or somewhere in the back of our pot, like I'm showing in, the, um, in this demonstration, or we could pot it directly into the center of the container. But if we pot it in the center, we are already restricting, you know, what fits around the edges. So just uh, to maximize space, back up against one edge is going to give us the best let me see if I can do this. Back up against the edge is going to give us the best kind of space uh, efficiency or maximize our space, like I said. So if we have our little four inch grass tucked up, tickling my nose back here, then like I said, we have easily space for two more plants. Now, as I'm <clears throat> working with this grass, I might as well mention, this is one of our evergreen sedges. So this is Carex. Uh, just orange sedge, Carex testacea. You'll also see on my table um, a, another Carex called cappuccino, which is a little bit more, um, some might say brown, uh, I would say mahogany, um, but the coloration of Carex, the Carex plants gets more and more bright, brighter over the winter. Um, so you can see another Carex in this container over here, but it's just fine textured, kind of whimsical, gives you some movement um, and airy, uh, that airy texture without, well, while adding height, I guess I'll say. And as I mentioned, did I already? It is evergreen. So back into the, back up against the edge with our thriller, okay? So we're introducing again now design concepts. So our thriller is gonna be the tallest plant, usually the one uh, and only in the container. And then we're gonna add some filler or color, essentially, to this container. <clears throat> and because we have space for two, maybe three more, we have to pick uh, wisely, I guess you would say. <clears throat> now I also am frequently you know, reminded that we need to work with the color of our containers too. So, you know, the bright blue container might not be the best for um, certain colors, uh, wouldn't set off or, or complement certain colors, but other colors it's gonna look great with. So again, using our evergreen grass in the back as a thriller, I'm gonna choose a fun little berry plant. This is Hypericum. Um, this happens to be Miracle Grander, Miracle Grander. Um, it's a kind of a seasonal plant, so I might not keep it in the entire winter, but I do like that berry color and texture that it gives us right now, and it really kind of pops against this uh, bronzy grass. And as I mentioned, you can see we're now running pretty low on space, and I do want a pansy, because pansies, I know, are going to give me the longest lasting winter color because these are winter pansies. So they bloom all year, well, all winter long. See if I can tuck that in there and I don't know if my colors complement very well. So I'm gonna look for another color, maybe a darker, about the same color. How's that, better? But now we see, boom, one, two, three, and I'm really pretty full here. I could squish and squeeze and cram, but I don't have a lot of room. So I've missed, I have two fillers and a thriller, but I don't have a spiller. Now that's not the end of the world because this is a short pot, nine inches tall. So sometimes if we put a trailing plant like this crazy vinca in there, it's already almost going to be standing on the, or, you know, brushing up onto the ground. So short pots may not be the most appropriate to have big long spilling plant material coming out of them <clears throat> and just in general short pots tend to be a little limited in the combo uh, options but in this 10 by 9 container we could also simply do I mean, you have these pots, right? You're not going to toss them out. But just do something singular, like a beautiful Dusty Miller. Or a 
a fun little colorful winter uh, ornamental cabbage. And even in this case, you could probably tuck in some trailing plants, a little trailing accent or some pansy, one, two pansies, for example, in along here. We'd squish it in just a little bit. So you are somewhat limited by container size. Like I said, here we have 10 inch by nine inch. This is the smallest that I'm really gonna talk about. Here, it's almost like if I spread my hand open and put it in there, that's about as wide as my hand. So we prefer to go to larger size containers because that allows us not only to add more plant material, but to make kind of a bigger presentation. <clears throat> we use um, plastic pots to make it really easy to pot up our container designs and then switch them out kind of easily throughout the seasons or you know just rapid changes. So what we tend to use are these 14 inch get these out of my way we use these 14 inch plastic pots as you can see here it's about 14 inches wide and maybe about 14 inches deep and the idea of these is we do what's called uh, drop-in so um, I'm pretty sure you already have an idea of what that means um, but we have and you can barely see all this but a decorative pot, a beautiful ceramic container. And it looks like it's beautifully planted here with our evergreen Carex with some winter pansies. I've got a beautiful champagne hookera. And this is an ornamental pepper um, that is again seasonal, but we may change it out. Our trailing accent in this case is a chocolate creeping Jenny. And one day you could say, you know what, my summer geraniums and petunias look like hell. I forgot to water them. They got budworm. I haven't cared for them properly. Or I am simply ready for a change of season. And you go like this. Oh, out with the old. Take away your summer container. <clears throat> Come along and plop in your next presentation um you know that you've planted up maybe ahead of time so that you can just give up on summer when you're ready to but have been like preparing for the next season all along which gives your containers a chance to kind of what we say fluff out and and grow a little bit now you can see again this natural uh kind of unglazed natural ceramic container that i've dropped this pot into as I mentioned, this is a 14 inch. This that I'm dropping it into is a 20 inch by, so 20 inches wide by 16 inches deep. It just so happens that it's just wide enough for the lip of this 14 inch pot and for me to get my fingers, you know, down on the side so that I can easily drop it in and pick it back up. But when I set it all the way in the bottom, it actually sits a little lower than I want. It sits a little down in a hole in the pot. So what I have done, and you can use, of course, any type of uh, repurposed material you have, or um, even a little bit of soil or bark dust, is I've just raised up the bottom of the container just enough that the pot sits properly in there. So I've used a little bit of Styrofoam, just packing material. Styrofoam sits down here. It stays um, dry if I, you know, when the pot is watered and um, it's not gonna rot or decompose. God bless styrofoam for that. So um, perfect to just sit down there for as long as I need it. <clears throat> Drop my little pot in. Now, if we wanted to use a different combination or Let's just say, I really like to change my containers out. Let's say I have a pot for every season, spring, maybe full of bulbs, summer, just a ton of gaudy, blousy color, fall, all the colors and berries and kind of feels of the season, and then switch to winter giving me um, maybe a little conifer and some 
I don't know, winter color, right? Red berries. So here's my fall pot. La 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 la, like I said, all the gorgeous colors of fall. And coincidentally in here, this, this particular grass, as I mentioned, evergreen. This ornamental pepper, it's a pepper, right? It's not gonna make it past frost, so I don't have those kinds of expectations for it. Frost is gonna take us up into possibly Thanksgiving here or there. If this pepper freezes before Thanksgiving, you know what I might do? Pull it out and just stick a pumpkin in its spot. Just stick a little pumpkin on the ground, you know, on the soil in your container to fill a hole. It's a perfect thing to do that time of year. Pansies, they're gonna go through the winter, but come summertime, they're not the happiest little things in the heat. So I may just pull the pansies out and put them in compost. This chocolate creeping Jenny might look great with my summer combination, or maybe I just pot it up and uh, keep it until next fall or plant it in the garden because it's perennial as well. And then we have the hookara, which I'll talk about coral bells, all evergreen perennials which means that when this container is done in the fall, if I don't want to look at it anymore and I want to change seasons, as I mentioned, out it goes, I could just go sit it somewhere else, keep it watered, let it be, you know, cared for. What survives, survives. What's not meant to, you know, what's annual will die back and the container can kind of morph into its more permanent state. Oh yeah, my mushroom, right? I mean, if you don't have enough color, psh, add a mushroom and a pumpkin. You got all options. Oh, geez. Um, a lot of ornamental grasses are deer resistant. Um, the ornamental peppers, I would say, are deer resistant because I think they're hot as bejesus. Uh, but hookara, these coral bells, definitely not deer resistant. Uh, ornamental cabbage and kale, well, it's not just ornamental, you could eat it too. And in fact, this particular one, which is Yokohama Red, is an edible kale. I just picked it because it's so darn pretty. Um, but those deer will just gobble up in an instant. Uh, Dusty Miller, though, as I was showing, deer resistant. Uh, so a really beautiful, just silvery, evergreen. We treat it like an annual. Um, I brought a baby and a teenager um, to show, or young adult perhaps, to just show you, you know, what's going to happen with Dusty Miller. This is a plant that like even grows in the winter. Um, so <clears throat> it's very satisfying to have this plant because it performs very well um, for an economic, pr economical price, their color spot or, you know, same price as like pansies are but they go on and on and on through the seasons. And this bright color, this white, gray, silver color shows up in the night and, sh and really sparkles and shines in the dark, which um, let's face it, you know, it's gonna have, we're gonna have some dark days ahead um, as we go into winter. So having things that really kind of show up and shimmer um, can be a great solution to that. <coughs> and deer resistant on the uh, Dusty Miller. Pansies, again, deer are going to eat pansies. So um, part of the you know, beauty of what I'm showing today is that there's so many options. If you look at your handout, um, no, I didn't cross-reference deer resistance with the, with the items on the list, but you can find lists of deer resistant plants um, not only on our website, but through... Um, like the State Master Gardener, Oregon State Master Gardener Association. And if you are curious on, you know, you putting together a combination that needs to be deer resistant, run it through those lists to be sure. Often again, the placement of your container may help to um, deter pests. You know, if they're up near the house or up against the house, you may not have as many uh, tendencies to have pests. <clears throat> so. Now to winter, we're changing fall, done. Fall's done. Maybe I just had my Thanksgiving party or whatever. And so Christmas or the, you know, winter season it is. So here, this 20 inch container again, perhaps somewhere before that like mad crunch of holidays between Thanksgiving and Christmas, which is always like, how many things can you really cram into that time period? Maybe before that, 
I planted up a winter pot. Maybe I did it at the same time as I did my fall container. I mean, all this stuff is available today here at the garden center. Just kind of depends on whether you want to go straight into a winter pot or if you want to take a detour for the fall season. I love fall and I love the colors of fall, so I never want to skip fall. But onto winter we go. So here we have that other container that maybe, like I said, maybe we potted it up weeks ago. Maybe we just potted it up this weekend. Maybe we just dashed into the garden center and bought it because we make them up for you just for that kind of instance. So pull out the old, drop in the new. And here we can kind of, you know, find the right angle. <clears throat> in this case, we've got a lemon cypress as our thriller. It's a little short for this uh, tall of a container, to be quite honest. But this is a plant that grows pretty quickly and readily. Uh, in fact, buying a little lemon cypress even this one's a little taller already. So this is your quart size or four inch lemon, well, quart size. So a quart size lemon cypress within about a year, oh gosh, no, within a few months of growing can become this very good eight inch size. Um, and this is a plant that loves lots of water. So it wants to be out in the rain and is evergreen, a little evergreen conifer with that bright golden color eventually it may outgrow your container and need to go out into the garden. So this is a wonderful vertical accent plant that can get up to eight feet or more, about a three to four foot kind of tapered or teardrop shape to it. Um, a great just kind of screen or accent in the garden um, that, you know, you started at what for $13.99, right? You know, and stuck in a container and then repurposed it when it got too big. So lemon cypress, you'll see them as one of the most popular thrillers in our container plantings. And that's what we have here. Our fillers in this pot include a ornamental cabbage. So again, I showed, I've got more than that guy over here. Ornamental cabbages come in a lot of different kind of colors and shapes and sizes these days. Here I've got coral prints and pigeon red. Uh, the, this is actually a kale. The more roughly or um, finer cut leaves are kale. The bigger, smoother paddle leaves usually are cabbage. Both of these plants will get brighter and brighter colors in their centers as the weather gets cooler. So we'll see more pinks and uh, whites develop into, or ivory, I guess, develop into the center of this as we get cooler weather. And the purples will deepen in the center of this pigeon red as it gets cooler going into winter, fall and winter, later fall and winter. Cabbages and kale will survive quite a bit of cold weather, usually going through almost the entire winter unless we have like a prolonged deep freeze. They, as I mentioned, are edible. I mean, they're not that different from any other kind of cabbage, but they're not always the, um, you know, thinnest or most delectable uh, of the variety. So you might find a lot of roughage if you try to eat them. Um, however, the fun of, you know, again, the texture, the combinations, watching them deepen in color as you go through the seasons adds good uh, texture and um, seasonal addition to our winter container. So a thriller, excuse me, a filler. Another filler are our winter pansies. <clears throat> We've got our Dusty Miller over here and Dusty Miller is starting to grow as I showed. So because this guy's starting to get almost as tall as our filler and we might not as our thriller and we might not want that, we can actually pinch or trim the dusty. So you can see kind of how it grows. We've got new growth coming out of the top with a single stalk and I'm going to go in, I can do it with my fingers or I can use um, my pruners, which I always have on me. So I'm going to just go in about, I don't know, a third of the way down and I'm going to pinch out the top of the dusty miller. <clears throat> and so this piece here is the amount that I've removed getting it to be a little bit of a better size, uh, closer in size to my cabbage over here at my kale and the other fillers. 
it's going to continue to grow, but it's going to branch uh, where I cut it. So that's going to make a little bit of a fuller plant instead of a single plant that's kind of rivaling already my single plant in the center, my lemon cypress. Last thing I have kind of coming over the edge is doing double duty. This is Carex Feather Falls. This is a grass that can be a filler spiller. So as you see, it has this really great um, curly habit so that if you put it up against the edge of a container, not only does it give you some volume, but it also softens the edge so that you're not looking at just that harsh edge of the container itself. Um, evergreen, Carrick's Feather Falls is a lovely evergreen grass and it has a green, an, a solid green counterpart if you don't, you know, if the variegation isn't going to work with your combinations, you know, we might not want to put like so much variegation together if I was using this awesome fat shedra. So this is a combination plant, um, two popular plants that were bred together and had a baby. Um, this is fat shedra aurea and yo star. Fat Shedra is a combination of Fatsia japonica, also known as our Japanese Aurelia, and bred with English Ivy, so even an international baby. Um, and English Ivy is our Hedra Helix, so Fatsia japonica crossed with Hedra Helix leads to Fat Shedra. I swear botanists make this stuff up sometimes. Fat Shedra is going to be evergreen with these kind of glossy, shiny tropical looking big bold leaves it's not strong enough to be like woody and hold itself up so even like you know one little windstorm and it's all over the place so it's going to benefit from maybe like a stake a uh, trellis something sturdy to give it support it's also going to benefit from a little bit of winter protection so best against the house or under the eaves so that you have a little bit of um, warmer, you know, kind of a eco zone where it's slightly warmer. And being that this would certainly be our thriller, oh, and it'll grow in like total shade. So part shade to shade. It could be a little much or it could be just right, depending on your style. Could be a little much to add this variegation to the bottom. If you wanted to be super dramatic, get this guy out of the way for a sec. If you want to be super dramatic with this coloration of the fat shedra and depending on our pot we wouldn't want to do it on a black pot. We could add something stunning like black mondo grass. Now black mondo grass again is like the you know Halloween's poster child plant. It is truly black, does best with a little bit of protection from the hot afternoon sun. It stays uh, out all winter, um, also known as evergreen, but it's not green, so um, it's ever black, ever present in the winter time. And this would give us a really fun contrast of uh, the big, bold, shiny leaves variegated with that dark evergreen, thin blade. So we're working with leaf, leaf shape, leaf contrast in color, and then even just to be, you know, a little more. You know, fun. We could add, oh, we could do a red berry combo, would be more, you know, holidays, Christmas, this time of year. Pop in just a, a little bit of seasonal cheer uh, so that, you know, you've got this drama and kind of sophisticated planting. And then just a little, remember, we're flowers. You know, flowers are fun too. So you could add in a Rudbeckia. This guy is, again, considered one of our annual color spots going to make it till frost and then we're going to pull it out. So if we're doing something like that, we can even leave almost like a, a rotating hole in the container. If you just planted these two, filled all the dirt in, and instead of actually planting your seasonal switch out plant, you could just bury it into the dirt, pot and all, so that it's level with all of the other containers or even bury the exact same container size in the dirt empty. That way you can set a container right down inside of it uh, to switch it out. So it would be the Rudbeckia here until it didn't look good anymore. Then maybe I would still come along. It's uh, not quite harvest or Thanksgiving yet. So I'm gonna use a little colorful pepper 
and I'm gonna have that pepper in here until I don't want a pepper anymore. Then I'll move on to my winter pansies for the rest of the season. <clears throat> Some winter pansies are also trailing. Um, so depending on, you can find trailing pansies to give you again, both that kind of filler, spiller combination at the same time. So there's our fall winter, how to use drop-ins, how to switch it out. If we were potting, let me get this back out. If we were potting this container up, starting from scratch, an empty pot and a bunch of plants, or potting the ceramic container up directly, the first thing you're gonna do is use a potting soil. So although you may have bags of, you know, mushroom compost and chicken manure, and maybe you've got some good soil to shovel into your raised beds this summer and you still have a little pile in your driveway that you haven't gotten rid of, don't be tempted to use earth or manure or you know anything else other than potting soil when you are potting up your plants if they go into pots you use potting soil <clears throat> now that goes the other direction as well we don't necessarily use potting soil when we're planting in the ground so we want ground soil for that um, or compost or planting compost or planting mix <clears throat> potting soil which of course comes in bigger bags, trying to just, you know, not use my big muscles all the time. Um, potting soil can really vary by uh, supplier. And so we love the GMB brand because it is uh, locally produced here in Washington. It has a nutrient package to get plants off to a good start. And it is also um, like bursting with beneficial microbes and uh, mycorrhizae, basically. So adding this into your container, you're going to start by filling up the bottom with potting soil all the way up until you reach the right level to put in your largest pot size. So we want this biggest, this would be, for example, this is a deep, it's actually a, almost as deep as a one gallon, but this happens to be in a two gallon container and it's our biggest and it's our thriller. So let's put it in first and kind of get it situated. So putting in our two gallon, we filled up the soil until that pot sits right on the soil line. Now we may be putting in plants that are slightly smaller and in smaller containers, which means that once this one's in, we're gonna pour in more potting soil to raise the level up <clears throat> to maybe, again, I said we weren't gonna do that one, I keep picking it up. We're gonna raise up the level to get it, see the difference in container sizes. From this, now we need to add another, I don't know, four, six inches so that we can set this plant in next and it also sits on the dirt level, but everybody is level also with the top of the container because of course we don't want our plants to be exposed and held up and sticking out of the pot but we don't want them to be buried too deeply where we end up covering them partially with soil altogether. So as you plant and as you add more plants you keep adding soil to the bottom and then kind of tucking in your extra soil around each container uh, to make sure that you get all the root balls covered, etc., all as you go along. We like to also use fertilizer when we're planting. And that could be the paradise or organic leftover fertilizer, honestly, that you have in your garden shed. If you've got vegetable fertilizer, rows and flower food, if you have a bag of anything that you think you could use up this season so that you can start fresh next spring, 
uh, I recommend using that in your containers. Otherwise, come and buy something that is all purpose. Um, this this all paradise blend is 555 all purpose, uh, a scatterable so you don't have to dig it in or scratch it into your pots, um, all organic. So even if you had some left at the end of the season, um, end of this fall, you can use it in your spring veggie garden or with edibles um, to finish off the bag. If that didn't matter to you, then going with a um, synthetic fertilizer. And again, something that's easy to apply. The paradise should be reapplied about every six weeks during the fall and winter season. The um, synthetics can often go much longer than that. So something like Osmocote, and this is 14, 14, 14, as opposed to the triple five that Paradise Blend is. Uh, something like Osmocote is going to feed for four months or up to four months in your pots or in the ground, but it's easy to use in containers. You just uh, sprinkle a scoop into the hole as you're planting because it's slow release. It can go right into the planting hole, or you can sprinkle it onto the top on the soil surface if you already have a planted container and that'll kind of water in as um, it'll break down as you water it in. <laughs> when, let's see, soil nutrition, watering. Yeah, rain is gonna be uh, coming. But if your pot, there's a couple of, com there's a couple of things that complicate whether rain, whether you, you can just trust rain to water your pots. One is, is it up against the eave, uh, you know, like under the eave of the house? Is it under a tree that blocks the moisture? Is it on the front porch with a cover where rain's not even really falling? I mean, maybe when rain falls sideways, which it frequently does, but you know, you can't rely on that. So uh, fortunately, our winter containers also need, as the, as the weather cools, and there's more moisture in the air. Our plants don't need that constant daily watering like they do at the heat of summer or the peak of summer. But we will need to make sure that the pots are watered on a regular basis, but not overwatered. So like I said, it's not as intense. You're not watering like you did in the summer months, but you can't forget to water them completely. If we have, going into the winter, if we have... Um, frost warnings, if we've got, um, uh, you know, notices that say bad weather is coming, winter advisories, that's what I'm talking about. Um, winter advisories coming, one of the best things that you can do for your container plantings is to make sure that they have been well watered or to water them thoroughly before it freezes or before it gets extremely cold. It's also not a bad idea to have a little uh, pot riser, so some sort of either pot feet that lift your plant up off the, lift your container up off the ground by half inch or an inch or so, or if you move them frequently or want to be able to move a heavy container and, um, you know, wash the deck underneath it or scrub the cement steps, we have trolleys or caddies essentially that are, this holds 500 pounds. So my pot that I keep showing off, um, even this big 20 by 16 container could easily go on a uh, support like this and the wheels will roll it wherever you need it to, as well as lock it to keep it there in, um, once you've got it in place. So the caddies are fantastic to not only help move them, but anything that you lift up off the ground just a little is going to help it drain through more thoroughly in the wet season and keeps it uh, a little bit more protected in the freezing conditions because often we see freeze cracking where the bottom of a container kind of sh shades itself at the very bottom and freezes to the ground and then doesn't thaw as quickly as the top of the container. So we get a, a, a break kind of two thirds of the way down. Um, because it was sitting directly on the ground. So raising it up, you have a better chance of your pot surviving through the winter. Also in extreme cold, well, if you've got your pot on wheels, you're already ahead in dealing with extreme cold. I mean, move it, right? How easy is that? 
and push it, <coughs> push it into the garage, push it up against the house, into the corner between the house and the garage or under the eaves so it doesn't get snowed on. All of these advantages of tucking a plant in because you've got a little bit of an easier way to transport it will help you protect your planting during extreme weather conditions. It's not that these plants can't take it. It's just that they're gonna look a little haggard after sitting for five days covered in snow. So if you can prevent that by just moving them out of the conditions for the few days um, that they're extreme, moving them back out, then you don't have something to clean up after the fact. <clears throat> now, if it's an enormous pot or you can't move it or you don't have any place to move it, you can also cover your containers during extreme cold. Um, so once they've been thoroughly watered for the um, protection against drying out during freezing, then cover them with a thin um, cover like Thinsulate here. This is a lightweight frost blanket for plants. You could also use old cotton sheets, um, even wool, army surplus wool blankets, just, you know, the heavier the plant, the more it's gonna, or heavier the protection, the more it's gonna lay down on your plants. So lightweight is always good. Avoid using plastic in covering or doing any kind of frost protection because plastic will heat back up too quickly once the sun comes out or the weather turns. And instead of keeping your plant insulated through the extreme conditions, with plastic plants will have really rapid changes in extremities from cold cold to hot hot in that plastic greenhouse that you've just created so avoid plastic um, completely now thrillers fillers spillers and seasonal color okay so thrillers fillers spillers Mostly we want these plants to be, at least we want the thriller to be permanent, pretty permanent. This time of year, yeah, we want it to be an evergreen. It might be a shrub or an evergreen grass or a perennial. Fillers also should either persist through the winter, like a winter pansy, or again, an ornamental grass like our Carex Feather Falls. Another great filler that persists through the winter and is evergreen, hookera, or floral fillers such as winter pansies. We could even call Dusty Miller a floral filler. And finally, spillers. And spillers also should probably stick around through the winter. Ideally, they're evergreen. <clears throat> this is cool wave trailing pansy. So uh, growing a little bit differently in its habit. See how upright this fire pansy is? And cool wave is already spreading out and kind of showing that it's gonna be a trailing pansy. So this planted on the edge will shortly go down over the edge of the container, giving us the spiller effect that we want, as opposed to an upright pansy. Another very popular spiller is the Golden Creeping Jenny. So this is uh, Lismachia. We use it in the summer months. We use it in the winter months. Golden Creeping Jenny, again, you know, against a kind of neutral tone container like this is not quite the dramatic contrast that it would be up against the red pot, for example. So using the color of your container also for what color that spiller is will have a different effect on the combinations. Golden Creeping Jenny is a perennial. You can plant it in the garden, but it can become invasive. So you want to be sure that it's a place that you don't mind that it just takes over um, or just don't plant it in the garden at all. And don't let it touch the ground uh, when it's in your containers or it will root onto the ground and then you've got it growing there. <coughs> it's also all but evergreen. Let's call it semi-evergreen. It doesn't really like February, um, but to be quite honest, who does? Um, so it dips out in February and then it kind of comes back in uh, earlier mid-March and will regrow in the same container. If not the Golden Creeping Jenny, 
for another golden accent, we've got Vinca Illumination. So this is one of our evergreen trailing plants. This is um, the smaller leaf, so Vinca Minor. Illumination is probably one of the brightest contrasting colors of Vinca. But next is a Vinca Major called Wojo's Gem. So here we have a, a more of a yellow yellow and a deeper green on a smaller leaf for illumination, <clears throat> a creamier yellow on Wojo's Gem and a larger leaf. Both of these will make a little blue purple flower in spring. So um, evergreen and uh, pretty easy going. So we can have these spilling out of the, out of the container. Or as I mentioned, you don't always want everything to be evergreen, right? I mean, not, you don't always want everything to be variegated. That can be too much of a mess on your eyes. Uh, this is maculata. So this is Vinca maculata. It has a very subtle variegation to it. Um, but again, this kind of pretty, you can't see it in the, in the video, I'm sure, but a pretty coral colored stem that just brightens up in colder weather and a nice relaxed habit with a larger leaf that gives us a good contrast. So Vinca maculata, evergreen, um, hardy through the winter and gives us that great spiller effect without necessarily, um, you know, being a flower. Thrillers are going to either be, as I mentioned, shrubs or evergreen perennials. You could use a taller, cabbage, for example, as a thriller. So because this happens to be this variety uh, crane red, so the crane cabbage series often has a um, stem, so it becomes kind of a cabbage tree look. So we could use crane as our height and then use a shorter filler and some spillers. So it all depends kind of on the size of your container and the perspective of what you need as your thriller. These evergreen grasses that I showed off, cappuccino and just orange sedge, Carex testacea, just airy kind of fun evergreen grasses for thrillers, could also be fillers. Fatchedra we looked at, I'm gonna put it down so that we have a little less complication here. An evergreen perennial thriller Again, depending on the size of your container, they could also be fillers. This is euphorbia. So euphorbia you'll see on your list. These are perennials that could later go out into the garden. Um, really great contrasting colors through the cold weather. We have euphorbia blackbird here with the burgundy colored foliage. And then the variegation yellow and green on the um, other side, this is Euphorbia Ascot Rainbow. So both of these could either, like I said, be fillers or thrillers, depending on the size of your container. If we wanted to use this 16, uh, this 20 inch by 16 pot, it's not tall enough to be a thriller. So it's gonna be a filler and we could use a taller, more upright plant as our center plant or our thriller. So this is another great thriller that works in sun or partial sun, is evergreen, um, and gives us height and vertical accent with still providing lots of space to add in uh, lots of other plants around the edges. This is Ilex Sky Pencil, also known as Sky Pencil Japanese Holly. So if we had Sky Pencil, either again in the center, or we could go center back. We've got lots of room in this container. Then we have Ascot Rainbow as one of our thriller plants. Actually, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it kind of towards the back. Another filler as we go, we could then use a larger leaf since we've got smaller leaves but a, uh, something that's a little bit uh, complementary to the Ascot Rainbow. So this is Hookera Peach Flambe. We tuck that in, and I'm out of hands. And we tuck in Peach Flambe, and now we've got still plenty of space to add some pansies for color, 
some trailing accents to soften the edges. And goodness gracious, I think I might even have enough space in this pot with this combination as I put in pansies to also be so forward thinking <clears throat> as to go to the very next season and that is to plant fall, well, spring blooming bulbs. Underneath the pansies, I'm gonna put in these little narcissus. They're a type of short daffodil. This is a variety called Tazetta. It gets like six to eight inches tall. So it's gonna kind of per perfectly blend in with the rest of the planting. <clears throat> they can go in in the month of October and come up in Oh, well, this will be like March that they bloom. And then they'll go back down at the you know, end of the March or they'll bloom for a couple of weeks. And that will extend the color that I have in my container planting and give me just kind of a, you know, a thrill, another change, a surprise as we go along. You can plant taller tulips or daffodils into your containers, but just again, kind of think about perspective, um, what size would look right with the other plants that you have already growing in there. I like sky pencil, great, uh, kind of just all purpose thriller or center plant. Another one of my favorites that you'll see on your list as a thriller for part shade to shade. So often, you know, we're up in our um, front porches or, you know, tucked into the entryway where the sun maybe just kind of glimpses around, you know, three o'clock or something like that. So that's really like shade to part shade. This is Mahonia Soft Caress. Um, Soft Caress is one of our uh, organ grape cousins, but the, as the name implies, it's not pokey like a holly is, so it doesn't have uh, sharp needles. I can caress it, and I like to, um, but it has this kind of fern texture to it as well. Evergreen, shade, slow to moderate growing. It could get up to a three by three, but Probably not this year, probably not in this pot. So I'm gonna like rent this plant to this container for the season. At the end of the season, rent is over and this plant is evicted because I might wanna put in a big geranium and a fuchsia and all of my summer color. Now, soft caress gets planted out in my shade garden as a shrub that fills into a space in my landscape that maybe I had a need for in the first place. So how to use these um, evergreen shrubs that you put into your fall and winter containers later into the season will have kind of an idea in mind of, oh yeah, I always wanted Mahonia Soft Caress. I'll put it in now here, and when I want it, when I want my pot for something else, I know right where I'm going to put it in the garden. Another great thriller, rosemary, upright rosemary. Best in full sun or part sun. It is the, you know, the thriller that keeps on giving. Um, this is barbecue, which is a variety of rosemary that has really kind of thick, robust, upright growth and larger needles. Um, you could step out and snip a little bit of rosemary from your container planting and add it to a meal. Uh, or even just kind of every time you walk by it, if it's at your front door, just brush up against it. Uh, and, and be hungry. Um, every time I smell rosemary, I want food. So maybe don't, unless you're prepared to like step in and feed yourself. But it's just a, it's a nice aroma, um, a welcoming scent, a fresh scent, something that is fun to have um, at, the con, you know, at the front door so that you can interact with it and get that smell. Again, evergreen, perennial. So rosemary is going to end up being something we're gonna plant out in the garden in the long run. These are Cordyline. So I have Cordyline Ta Torbay Dazzler here. This is Cordyline Red Star. Cordyline are very showy accent evergreen grasses that are marginally hardy. So again, um, we're looking at uh, 10 degrees. So you wanna keep them in a slightly protected area and definitely you know, pay attention to the winter weather alerts and protect these cordylines or you'll see some frost damage on them in extreme temperatures. 
but that's pretty flashy, um, worth the effort, if you ask me, um, to have that bright, showy thriller through the winter months. Thrillers, thrillers, thrillers. Okay. Oh, over. I've got a. I got a weird container planting, because some of us are weird. So here I have this red pot, which is, you know, it just like screams Christmas, I guess, but it doesn't have to. So it all depends on what goes into the red pot. Uh, as to how Christmassy it's going to feel. I've got um, Halloween is one of my favorite holidays. And so I've got a pot that I want to have kind of speak to the Halloween season before we go into Christmas and the holidays. So I've given a little bit of kind of a um, spooky treatment to this container and I'm using some things that won't go through the winter. And that includes, well, I'm using one thing, really. So this little guy here is a variegated ornamental pepper. And we see the, the fun of this one is that it gives us a final color of the red pepper that is really almost identical to the color of our pot. So that brings in the red. Otherwise, it's a very purple and white and um, kind of a different color combination to the... Um, color, you know, the colors that we've pulled together. <clears throat> but it works <clears throat> with the right uh, plants chosen to kind of all sing in unison together. We have this pepper, as I, it's called Calico. I had a cat named Calico once. I know it's not very creative. She was a Calico. Um, but don't eat them. Ornamental peppers. Very cool looking though. Next, we've got, well, okay, let's go to the Thriller. This Thriller is a weird plant, but it is also very dramatic. It's almost black, similar to like that black Mondo grass we were talking about earlier, <clears throat> but it has this white silvery uh, undercolor uh, that you can see as sort of the leaves turn. This is it, it's evergreen. Um, and it has all its leaves on it right now. So you're looking at the plant like it's gonna look all the time um, Cool in my opinion, maybe dead in your opinion again the wonder of That we're all so different and there's a plant for every one of us. I think so <clears throat> When I pair this which is called Karokia Cotoneaster it doesn't have a common name because that's how we're oh no wire netting bush wire netting bush i guess it kind of looks like wire netting so karokia ketoniaster when i pair this plant with another super weird plant the the large soft leaves of this senecio angel's wings the whitey silver color of the senecio is going to accent and pull the whitey silver color that we have on the undersides of the foliage and the stems on our carochia. And then to complement that, like I said, adding a trailing pansy and our calico pepper in basically complementing colors so that none of them really um, scream for attention but sing together to create uh, an ensemble that makes me happy. It's not, it may not be in any magazines. It may not even be, I um, mean, you may think it's horrendous. Guess what? It's my container planting, not yours. And you can do something else with the same kind of design elements and what we've talked about today and learned today using the Thriller Filler Spiller components, making sure if you feel, um, less than fully confident, make sure that you ask one of the experts at our garden centers to even just approve of your grouping. You know, tell me, is this all going to work together in a pot? Will this be a fall and winter combination? Sometimes you can't tell and it doesn't often look, you know, it's hard to believe that this beautiful plant is going to stay through the winter. It's hard to 
believe that a pansy will flower in the frost and snow. But if you take our word for it and ask the experts, try it yourself, uh, see and feel what it's like to be successful, container planting at this time of year can actually be um, less stressful and an easier thing to keep looking good and uh, even just to keep them alive. I mean, gosh, it's a struggle sometimes in the summer to keep things watered. So that's one thing that we don't have to worry about nearly as much in the winter. And there's also less insect uh, problems. So we have fewer bugs to worry about too. Now there's always gonna be slugs. Slugs are a thing. If you're in the Pacific Northwest, slugs are gonna get you. Um, so always put a pinch of your slug control into the container planting about every month. I know. You're like, no, it's a pot, there's no slugs in there. Well, you are fooling yourself. Um, slugs are everywhere or um, will get there if they aren't now. So be proactive and put a little pinch of slug control in monthly throughout the fall and winter months. Lastly, mums <clears throat> and seasonal color. So you'll see on your the back of the handout, Seasonal color, pansies and violas, well, there's, they're the longest lasting seasonal color. If you manage to get pansies or violas planted by, let's say, mid-October, that gives them enough time with nice, or at least decent weather before it's freezing and raining constantly, that they create a nice root system that will support them and a... Um, plant that can survive through the winter months. Now they're not gonna like bloom their heads off through the winter. They will have flowers. Uh, at times maybe they won't have flowers, but they are alive and with uh, time they will produce new flowers and continue to bloom. Each flower lasts longer in the cool weather than it does in the, in the hot summer months. Um, I always have to remind people, well, where do florists keep their flowers, right? in the cooler. They're not putting them in ovens, so um, cooler flowers do better and last better. But mums, the rudbeckia, ornamental rudbeckia, some of these plants are truly uh, more seasonal than others. These are short-term color additions that we don't expect to stay in bloom throughout the winter or to continue to bloom throughout the winter and some may not even survive frost. As I mentioned, in many cases you could, could add, have a completely planted container with a vacancy that is your rotating spot. The seasonal addition can be dropped in while it looks good, pulled out when it no longer looks good, and a new maybe berry bush or uh, heather or uh, hookara could all be dropped into its place when you pull out that seasonal accent. So although they may not last forever, um, the color and the you know true kind of marking the season with the mum, how can you go through fall without a mum, right? Uh, those are easy ways to add them to your plantings and then remove them when they no longer are in bloom um, and replace them with something that's gonna look good for the longer end of the season. That is a lot to cover for fall and winter container planting. Um, but again, many of the same principles carry through to our spring container plantings or summer container combos as well. Container size, uh, plant nutrition, what kind of soil we use, the um, thriller, filler, spiller design co concept. And if uh, all else fails, as I mentioned, stop into one of our garden centers and you can purchase a pre-made, well, we try to have them done as much as we can, uh, but you can purchase a pre-made seasonal drop-in container uh, that will give you, if nothing else, instant color, but ideally some inspiration and a great example so that by the next time, uh, the next season that comes around, you can get your own empty pot pot up your next container uh, and do a drop in switch out like I told you today. And with that being said, y'all, thanks for watching. Have a great, happy gardening.